<sighs> okay, so I went back into the old videos that I had and there were a couple I had in there on how to brew French press coffee and they were crap. They were old, they had no information, I wasn't even talking to the camera, they were just garbage, so I deleted them. Here's the thing you gotta know about French press coffee. It's really stupid easy if you just take a little bit of time to pre-prep, all right? Uh, first of all, water, you wanna get, just boil, get ready to boil. I've got my coffee already ground. Um, I'm st I stole this method from the James Hoffman on another channel. He does, he's that British dude who does really snooty coffee reviews or whatever. Uh, entertaining guy. Um, this is based off of his method, but I'm altering it because um, I'm me. Uh, this is a one liter double wall insulated metal French press. You don't have to get insulated if you don't want to. That's fine. I've put about 65, I don't know, close to 70 grams of whole bean coffee. I've just ground it and I put it in here. Fresh boiled water. Just dump it in there. And you're gonna see this really bloom up on you. It's gonna like really get foamy. Don't be afraid of that. Just give it a good stir. And take it pretty, about as full as you're gonna go, all right? You are gonna be able to fit in this in there without overflowing, so don't get too nuts with it. And then you're just gonna wait. Get yourself a timer and do I do four minutes all right and in that four minutes we'll talk about some other crap um, coffee don't use pre-ground coffee just don't do it I, I mean I guess if you literally have a, a mill down on the corner and you can go get fresh coffee right away that might be fine I just buy whatever crap's on sale at Costco, all right? I go to our little, uh, our ho hometown place and we'll get coffee every once in a while, and it's good, it's fine, it's fresh. That's the important part. The fresher the coffee is, the better it's gonna taste. But I always, always, always get whole bean coffee. Because even if you buy prepackaged whole bean coffee, that is gonna be better than the ground stuff, all right? Uh, grind it, if you can, use a burr grinder, burr mill grinder, those have the most consistency uh, at, a, at a good budget nowadays. You can probably get a good burr mill grinder for less than 50 bucks if you look around. And I don't grind coarse. Uh, I do, literally do not change what the grinder settings are between this and doing our percolator, or not percolator, our, uh, it's basically a fancy pour through, it's like a it's a knockoff uh, mocha machine or whatever. Anyway, um, you just want to have consistency, a medium grind, whatever you want to call it. Uh, weigh it out. Make sure you have a scale. Weigh it out. I already know since this is about a liter, I'm going to be putting in about 65, 70 grams of coffee into that liter of coffee. Oh, I almost forgot. Yes, we are all at home. It is the Rona. A lot of us are still working from home. That does not mean you have to have cold coffee. Find yourself a good thermos and preheat it. When you're done with this, put whatever boiling water is left into here to preheat your thermos so that you're not sucking heat out of your coffee to bring the inside of this thermos up to temperature. Um, as far as thermoses go, everybody talks about like Stanley and the metal thermoses and whatnot. Uh, I find that they don't insulate that well. If you have, and this is, I know, I have opinions. So this is metal on metal, right? The inside of the vacuum jar and the outside of the vacuum jar are metal and they're connected with metal. Metal is a conductor of heat. If you don't have something on the outside of this to further insulate, you're just radiating heat out of the inside. It takes longer because it has to go all the way through the skin to get there, but you're still sucking heat out of the inside of that thermos. So I have seldom had a true metal Stanley thermos keep stuff cold for more than a couple of hours. This, yes, it's the same idea, but it's got this plastic coating and I've actually taken it apart. The inside of this is filled with, filled with like a, a foam like uh, insulation, this will be hot when I go home from work at five o'clock if I took it to my office. So get a good thermos. Um, water, uh, 
look, no matter where you live, everybody thinks they have the best water in the world, unless they think they have the worst water in the world. Uh, New York, I'm looking at you, you think you have the best water in the world, whatever. I'm in Nebraska, we're pulling this stuff out of the aquifer, we're pulling this stuff out of the Platte River. However, my city is growing, and they've been really kind of spiking the, the system with a lot of chlorine lately. You can taste it. Sometimes, just week by week, it depends. You pull it out of the tap, and it smells a little bit like pool water. Uh, I suggest getting yourself a, a, a Brita filter, some sort of pour-through filter, something like that. Just make it routine. The night before, go get your, you know, your, your water carafe, your pot, whatever. Draw it off the tap. If you have to put it through a filter, uh, I will literally just pour, pour it out or get it off out of the tap. Oh, here we go. I'll just get mine out of the tap the night before and just sitting on the counter sometimes that's enough to get the chlorine to go away. All right, so we've been four minutes and it may not look like it. Well, you, you can't see anything in here. There was a very thick crust of grounds floating on the top of this. And what I'm doing is I'm stirring it up and I can see that just from the bloom of the coffee and stirring this up that I actually have a lot more airspace than I thought I did. So I'm going to top this off a little bit. All right. And so that was four minutes. You will notice as you're mixing this that the color of the foam on the top is going to change. It's going to start very dark. And as you work your way through and you just kind of agitate this, you will visibly see a color change in the foam that's on the top of your coffee here. All right. Uh, and if you watch the videos from, uh, from James, you know, he talks about how you're basically trying to get <sighs> He doesn't say it this way, but you're essentially trying to get maximum uh, all the water getting into those grains. Your count, like those grains want to float up because when you put water on there, they bloom, they create CO2, they want to float, they are buoyant. And as they take on water, they become neutral and even heavier than water and they sink to the bottom. And so that's what you're doing here is you're basically taking this huge crust that forms at the top with all your grinds or your grounds. And then after four minutes, you're stirring it, and when you get done stirring it, you uh, you just basically want to see that nice, clear, nice, lighter colored foam on the top. And you could scoop this stuff out if you don't like it. That's you know you don't have to keep it. But the idea is to get all of those grounds back down into the actual liquid. And in the next couple of minutes, four minutes at least, I do four and four. Some people do longer. This is all going to settle down, and you're going to have pretty much all of your grinds on the bottom. All right. I do have the press from the French press, um, and I will put this in when I pour just to make sure that I don't get any little bits. But if you do this well, you almost don't need this at all. You will actually pour a clean cup of coffee off the top. I'm going to put this in anyway because I'm going to be filling this thing. I'm going to take all of this coffee and put it into here. I don't want to deal with trying to decant off. So I'm just gonna dump it. I have to have the screen. All right. Uh, what else? Um, that's about it, really. Um, I killed it. Oh well, technical difficulties. Let's pretend that I've been waiting for five minutes. Uh, so, we'll get this off of the side here. So I've got my thermos, and it's still steaming. It's hot, but cat, get off the counter. Come on, dude. All right. Uh, and like I said, you can scoop off that foam you want if you want. It's not going to hurt anything if you want to keep it. And you notice I'm pushing it down a little bit, but I'm not going all the way to the bottom. Um, I don't want it to like, I want that cake that's on the bottom to stay kind of free. Uh, it is making its own filter bed in a way. And if I push this down, I'm changing the dynamics of that, the pressure, what's flowing through it, whatever. And um, 
I just want a nice clean pour of coffee. All right, now depending on how you like your coffee, this is also your opportunity. Um, I'm one of those nerds I went through and I figured out what is my optimal sweetness, what is my optimal sugar, my, my coffee, my cream, my sugar, everything. And I just scaled it up for the entire thing. So usually I'll just get my little funnel out, I'll put some sugar in here. Uh, on something like this I'll put a, you know, maybe a couple tablespoons of sugar, but when you consider the per cup, it's actually not that much. Uh, and then I'll use always use half and half or whole cream. I, I, I have spoiled myself, I don't want to use whole milk anymore. Uh, also I'm out of whole milk right now. But yeah, so that's what you got. Um, this sealed up in a good thermos, boiling hot, already preheated, you now have a really solid cup of coffee, and this will stay hot for at least five to six hours. Uh, I have oftentimes popped open and gotten the last cup out, you know, three, four o'clock in the afternoon, and it's still pleasantly hot to drink. Um, and that's all there is to it. Enjoy. Uh, that is more or less my, me my method for French press coffee. Have a good morning. Ha <laughs>